If you are looking at moving to Oshawa, Ontario, you're going to want to not move here unless you can handle these five negatives. Uh, some of these negatives are things that you might not have thought of. Uh, also, at some point throughout the video, I'll explain kind of where I've been over the last six months. I haven't posted a video in forever, but I am happy to uh, kind of get started on this again. So we'll get into it right after this. Hey, what's going on? It's Brad Gates and I'm a local realtor here in Oshawa. If it's your first time watching any of my videos, be sure to like them. It lets me know people are liking what I'm putting out there, but then it's also allowing YouTube to push my videos in front of other people such as yourself who are looking at moving to Oshawa. I have people reaching out from all over the world and I absolutely love it. To be honest, I was shocked with how many people are moving here, but with uh, increased population, you're going to notice some things that change. And now there are some negatives that um, weren't quite there as much. Uh, so if you're looking at moving to Oshawa, uh, if you can handle these five negatives, then you can still consider Oshawa. If not, at least it's stuff that has been brought to your attention. Uh, if you are looking to move here, you can reach out anytime, call, text, email, uh, send the carrier pigeon, whatever is easiest for you. And I'm here to make your move and relocation go so much easier. So let's just jump right into the video and uh, we'll get started with the number five negative of moving to Oshawa and that is increased crime levels. So anytime a population growth kind of happens, uh, you'll notice that there's increased crime levels. Uh, so there's two things that kind of happen is you'll just have more people, which means more crime is bound to happen. Uh, another thing that I kind of saw, and I actually did a video on the downtown of Oshawa, was the increased homeless population that is kind of at that uh, Simcoe and um, Olive type area. Uh, there's halfway houses, soup kitchens, and it's just kind of um, increased the homeless population. Uh, before COVID happened, it was around 150 homeless people that were in Oshawa. And if you fast forward to modern day or current day, uh, it sits in and around uh, 300. So there has been quite the increase in the homelessness, uh, you'll also notice an increased security presence that's kind of downtown and they patrol uh, the park that is right downtown Oshawa and if you're driving through it you'll kind of see what I mean there's just a lot of people kind of hanging out there and it's because of the the amenities or stuff that has kind of been set up to help support the homeless uh, so Oshawa's heart's in the right place in terms of helping uh, but it's just kind of increased uh, the population as a whole so if you're moving to Oshawa, uh, you're going to want to note that there's the increased homeless population, but then there's also the increased crime rate that's happened as well. If you want to kind of see how the crime has been impacted, you can go on the Durham Police website and they do have a crime mapping tool. So you can just go through this map and it kind of shows um, all the different crimes that have happened. I did do a video on that as well, just to help bring awareness to people so that there's a way that they can kind of do their own research because... If they're looking at an area, uh, the more you can be comfortable uh, is kind of the better, especially if you've never been here before. It just really helps. The fourth negative that you're going to want to be aware of is the rush hour traffic. So this is something back in 2012 when I first moved to Oshawa. I was commuting to Mississauga and it was five days a week I was doing this morning rush hour and evening rush hour. Uh, so I had to sit through it and it was bad back then. And the population within Durham has increased so much. And even the population around the greater Toronto area as a whole has increased so much. But the 401 has not been widened. Uh, they do have the 407 that they kind of extended. It used to stop at Pickering. And now it goes right through past Oshawa and on its way to, to Bowmanville. And then it goes to uh, Lindsay. So it kind of goes all the way through. Uh, I believe it's the 115. I'm going to have to double check that. So if that's wrong, uh, I'm sorry, but it, it is something where the 407 kind of extended through to help alleviate some of that 401 traffic, but the 407 is friggin' expensive. So if you're taking that every day, expect probably five to $700 a month on 407 charges. Uh, and I know that because at some point 
Uh, I did rely on the 407 and luckily the company I was working for was paying it, uh, but still $500 and that was going back to 2013 to 14, back when that's when I was having it paid for. So I was using it uh, quite a lot, but uh, the 401, they haven't widened it. So it's kind of the same road that's gone from, you know, all through Toronto, right in past Oshawa and it, it's, it's congested. And the bottleneck that I've noticed is always in Ajax. Once you get to Ajax and past, then it kind of opens up and becomes a little less crazy, but it's still not something that you're gonna want to uh, be shocked by by not knowing. They do have the GO train, so if you are moving to Oshawa, you can hop on the GO station, GO train at the GO station, and it'll get you to Union Station in about 55 minutes. So there are options for that, uh, which if I was commuting downtown Toronto, I would do the GO station because it's just 55 minutes in a train, uh, beats the heck out of two hours on the 401 in a vehicle, especially with gas prices being at like $1.60, $1.70. Uh, so that's the fourth kind of negative that if you're looking to move to Oshawa, you are going to want to be aware of. And let's jump on to the next one. Before we jump on to the next one, uh, I forgot to mention that the 412, which is a connecting road from the 401 to the 407, as of April 5th, 2022, uh, the Ontario government has made that a toll-free road where that used to be something where you were being charged to use. So if you are kind of going through the north end of Oshawa, you do have an option to avoid having to go down uh, Stevenson or... Harmony Road or Simcoe or Ritson, any of the other north-south type roads that would get you, you do have the option, which now uh, you're not being charged for. The third negative that you're gonna wanna be aware of if you're looking to move to Oshawa has to do with the people. And the people are friendly. And that's something that I noticed a lot of back in 2012 when I did move to Oshawa. It was you go into restaurants or shopping and people are genuinely kind of nice and. And, and talking to you. So if you are the type of person that likes to go places and not have to talk to people, uh, Oshawa might not work for you. Uh, I'm sure that might change as the population increases because anytime a city gets really large, then people just kind of get busy, keep to themselves. But that's the one thing that I've noticed. And even to this day, going to places in Oshawa, uh, people, and not all times, but uh, the restaurants, the waitresses, or the people taking the food orders, stuff like that, they are, uh, they're just uh, easy to talk to and get along with, which uh, back before I moved to Oshawa, when I was living in Brampton, I, I did find that um, people in Brampton didn't necessarily want to talk too much. Uh, they kept to themselves. Um, I, I know that it's generalizing it and it wasn't all of Brampton, but I just, that was the biggest thing I noticed is when I moved to Oshawa, just the people were friendly. If you have a dog or you like to go on walks, uh, if you see somebody coming towards you, it's not uncommon for them to uh, stop and talk to you, at least ask how you're doing. Uh, so if you don't like to talk to people very much, uh, then that could be a negative that you're going to want to be aware of. Uh, so that was our uh, third negative. So before we go on to our second and then our number one negative, uh, just to give a little update in terms of where I've been. Uh, so life got a little busy for me. Uh, real estate has been uh, really good. And so I've been very thankful for that. Uh, my wife is uh, currently, as of April 2022, she is eight months pregnant. So having the pregnancy and the appointments and stuff like that to film has just been a little bit hectic. And so that's something that I've had to kind of put on hold now. Things have kind of stabilized a little bit uh, where I'm finding the time to do it. Uh, so it's been uh, fortunate that she's pregnant. It's eight months. Everything is going very well. It's our third child. So we have a daughter who is turning six and then we have a son who is four. And then now we're going to have a third child on the way. Um, also, uh, I've been taking up like doing handyman type stuff. Uh, so I've been in the process of finishing my basement. Uh, so you know what, actually, before I just continue talking, let me just kind of show you uh, the progress so far. And if you're a contractor and you notice things that I'm doing wrong, uh, by all means, put in the comments and you can, uh, you know, maybe save me some, some learning the hard way type uh, by, you know, you can just point out stuff that could help. 
Uh, but other than that, uh, I hope you enjoy the uh, little tour of my basement. So before we get the tour of the basement under wraps, uh, let me turn the green screen off and then I can show you around. So this is kind of all the tools. That's my thinking chair here. You'll see uh, when I'm trying to figure stuff out, that's kind of where I sit. Uh, you'll see kind of quite a bit of tools. That's my little collection of the tools. So pretty much I've done the blue membrane underneath the subfloor and then I've put the plywood. I don't even know what thickness I used, but I uh, just kind of did that. This is my setup so far. That's the furnace slash storage room. These are all kind of the cutouts for the door. Uh, we're gonna go and I'll show you my recording studio, but these are all of the, the wall studs that I've put in. Um, this is the studio I have for set up. Uh, this is where I take the pictures for my thumbnails. Uh, this here will be my recording studio slash office. Um, so hopefully you kind of like the tour of the basement and now you understand why I haven't posted a video in forever, but uh, let's get back to the video. The second negative of moving to Oshawa that you should be aware of is just the allergies. So if you are somebody who suffers from allergies, uh, something you'll be aware of because in the springtime, it's pretty bad. And, and that's, uh, that's something because of all of the trees and the parks and the conservation areas, the waterfront, the north, which has all of these trees. Uh, it's just something that um, when the spring is here and the pollen or the pollination or whatever it is that causes the allergies, uh, you'll notice a lot of stuffiness. So you're going to want to get your uh, allergy medication uh, figured out for sure before moving here. Um, or at least before the springtime, because that's when you'll notice it kind of uh, the worst. By summer, I kind of notice it gets a little easier. And I'm just speaking from experience because I've had to take the uh, allergy medication to to kind of help with, uh, you know, just the, the springtime. Uh, but that's kind of a small price to pay. Why, depending on the severity of your allergies, for having an area that does have a lot of green and trees so that when you are driving or you go bike riding or walking, you do have uh, nice scenery, nice shade, uh, the flowers, you see a lot of flowers, that kind of stuff as well. Uh, so uh, that comes along with the negative side of it where it is green and there's lots of flowers and it's really uh, pretty and nice on that sense, but you're gonna have to deal with the allergies. The number one negative that you're going to want to be aware of if you're looking to move to Oshawa is the weather. Uh, so we do get um, all four seasons, so you want to be able to handle them. Uh, the winters are friggin' cold, and this year we got hammered with snow to the point where it's like the worst snowstorm I can, I can ever remember. Uh, so if you're moving somewhere, you're going to have a driveway, uh, either really enjoy shoveling or get a snowblower. That's something that can help quite a bit. The spring, which we're kind of in right now, is just gloomy and rains are damp. Uh, so if you have grass in your backyard, your front yard, uh, this time of the year, it's just soggy. And that's kind of like the small price to pay, I guess, because by the time summer rolls around, you've had so much rain in, in the spring that uh, the flowers come out nice, the grass, it gives you a head start for the summer. So if you're going to maintain it, uh, the grass will be you know, heavily watered based on the spring. And then it's just up to you to continue to water it. Uh, don't overwater it. I've learned that the hard way, but that's, I guess, for another video. And, uh, and then so summer, it gets hot. So if you do not have air conditioning or you're looking at buying a house that does not have air conditioning, um, plan on being able to install one because the house we're in right now, it's uh, two and a half years old. We moved in December, 2019. And for the first year, we didn't have air conditioning. It was a mix between um, homeowner um, like warranty. So when you buy a brand new home, you get a full like one year bumper to bumper warranty um, on everything for the house. And then you have a two year warranty that covers the major mechanical type stuff. So your furnace, your HVAC, your furnace, air conditioning, hot water, like just all of that stuff. And then you have like a seven year structural warranty. So the first year, because we didn't want to spend six grand uh, from the builder to put in an air conditioner, 
uh, but we didn't want to void our warranty either. Uh, so we ended up trying to like tough it out for the first summer and it was, it was brutal. Um, we didn't have curtains, we didn't have blinds. Uh, so at the four or five o'clock sun that we got at the back of our house, the whole back of the house, it was just, it was just like a sauna. You couldn't bake because the icing and my wife learned that the hard way baking a cake uh, for my daughter's birthday is the icing was melting and we had like coconut oil that was in the pantry and it was just, everything was liquefied. That's how hot the inside of the house was. So we went to Walmart and we bought, uh, I think we had like six fans going on. Uh, and we were transporting them at nighttime. We would take them to the bedroom. And then during the day, they would be on the main floor. And it was just this constant hum of fans. Because it was, it was hot. And luckily, it only lasted for about two months. But it was, it was depressing. Because it's just, you can't do anything. It's just hot. <laughs> Sticky, hot, humid. Uh, my money tree, our plants inside the house did amazing. But we, <laughs> we did not. Uh, so that's just one thing. Uh, the summers are pretty hot here. And then by the time fall, fall rolls around, and that's always been my favorite season because the leaves start to change and it's just nice and cool. So if you like going for walks, everything like that, it's just really pretty. You can put on a sweater. So if you are a sweater type person, fall is great for that. Uh, so you do get all four seasons. Uh, the winter is by far can be the worst. It's always been my favorite because I like the outs outdoors and I do have a snowblower. So I, I've always liked winter, but if, if you don't like winter, uh, Oshawa and other parts of the GTA, you potentially could get hammered pretty hard. It's not always like that, but it is something like, especially this year, it was, uh, there was a lot of snow, like a lot. Like there was like six or five or six foot snow banks at the side of the road. Uh, the roads weren't as wide because the snow plows couldn't get to the actual curbs. So it was just a very interesting uh, winter. The day of the biggest snowstorm, people were stranded on the 401 where it was just nobody was moving for hours. Like So if you had an electric vehicle, being stranded on the 401 was not very good. Uh, but that's enough on the weather. That was our final negative. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, if you did, be sure to like it, uh, subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Uh, if you have subscribed, don't try and subscribe again because it will unsubscribe you. I have people reaching out from all over the world. So if you are looking to move here, I absolutely love it when people reach out. You can call, text, email, send the carrier pitch, whatever is easiest for you. And I'm here to make things so much easier for you. It doesn't matter if it's from a different country or if it's just from different parts of the GTA. I'm happy to help. And that's kind of what I love to do. Thanks for watching and until next time.